Hey everybody, this is Jeff, Swing Trade Warrior with DayTradeWarrior.com, back with our weekly video uh, recap of our closed trades. Uh, we had uh, only two closed trades this week, but we opened a ton of positions and we've scaled in and started scaling out of some by Friday. Uh, the next week uh, should be a pretty big week. We're deep in the money on a few trades and we're in profit on... Uh, uh, we're going to start taking profit on most of them next week, I think. So it's pretty exciting. I think next week's going to be a big week for us. We'll finish the month out nice and strong. And uh, so we'll get into some of those trades here in a minute. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I run the swing trade program at daytradewarrior.com. We do offer a seven-day free trial uh, for anybody who wants to stop by and check us out. We have a day trading chat room that uh, you can uh, participate in. Uh, where all our trades are called out live in real time and uh, you're given our entries and our exits and uh, all our scaling points in real time so it's not a mirror based service it's an education based service and we trade the strategies that we teach and uh, we have a packed room every day we're growing all the time so it's a very exciting uh, community to be a part of and I'm very proud uh, of how far we've come in such a short amount of time and the uh, reviews at invest testimonials and a lot of the emails that uh, Ross and I get uh, regarding our uh, program is uh, has really been inspiring and phenomenal. So I think we're in a really good place and uh, we encourage you if you haven't already, check us out for a seven day free trial. Uh, there's no commitment, no money required. Um, we let everybody uh, uh, test us out, You know, we, we welcome everyone. Uh, we also offer free chat days once a month uh, for anybody and uh, we usually post those out on Twitter Facebook uh, and social media. So uh, check out the website. You can find my uh, Twitter, stock twits, and uh, Facebook information down in the in the uh, video description. So without further ado, let's get into some of the trades. <clears throat> First trade I want to talk about uh, was GNC. Now, GNC was <laughs> this trade is my third loser of the year. Um, I'm trading right now. The portfolio is averaging uh, over 80 percent. On the year, um, we have uh, 24, I believe about 24 trades, eight are open right now, but I only have three losses. Unfortunately, GNC was a loss. Um, it, it might not have had to have been, but we'll talk about what happened here. Uh, so I'll pull up the daily chart on GNC, and first thing I want to point out here is uh, that we had this nice gap up after earnings, uh, right? right here. We had this big move uh, to the upside and what I was looking for was taking a, to take a starter position so that we could uh, continue the breakout uh, after the earnings run while it was flagging. We ended up getting in this trade at about 48.80 which is right about here, right about there or so. And uh, I was looking for a test of the high of this flag on the day that we got uh, the big gap up, which was 49.39 area. So I took a small starter position and I was looking to double once we broke the top of this flag right here. If I extend the daily out, go back in time here, we can see we're really at a key level uh, from uh, an area back in uh, February of 2014. We haven't traded above that gap uh, in a year. so. What I was looking for is a break over the high of that flag, and then we would start to move into this gap uh, all the way over here to the $51, uh, $51 area. And then from there, uh, you know, it's clear sailing up for another uh, five or six points. So I was really looking to, uh, to break this level, the 48, uh, 80 level, then the 49, 39 level of the flag so we could get into the gap. Like I said, didn't happen. So what did happen was we got a lot of consolidation. Um, this is a uh, three and a half dollar candle. So uh, I ended up taking, what did I take? I took uh, 400 shares, excuse me, 500 shares at 48.80. Uh, I was looking for immediate resolution on the trade. I don't like to sit in a trade while it consolidates, it ties up capital, and it just leaves too much room uh, for bad things to happen. When there's other trades I can put my capital into, uh, I'd rather just do that. So. I waited until we broke the $48 level uh, right around there and I bailed on the trade on this uh, on this Friday on the 20th here. Uh, what will happen now is I'm not sure if it's going to flag out, if it's going to move to the bottom of this candle, if it's going to move to the gap to the downside. So rather than get back in, I'm going to wait until we do break the top of this flag at the 49.39 area 
and uh, that's where uh, I'll take a full size long position and uh, see if it's ready to play out at that time. It just wasn't ready yet. And there's a lot of consolidation here. It's a great chart setup still, but I took it off the table uh, when we broke that 48 level that we tapped a few times. So um, I'm okay with that. And it was just, uh, it was only a $430 loss. So I'm looking to come back to that, make my money back when we break the high of this flag. Uh, so that's GNC. That was one of the trades we closed out this week. So another trade I took was on uh, TCO. This is a, a real estate investment trust and it had uh, a gap down uh, last week uh, on the 13th of February rather, um, it was an earnings miss and it has been trading underneath this 200 moving average, which is this yellow line right here. Uh, anytime you're trading under all your moving averages is generally not a uh, bullish indicator, it's very bearish. So. Uh, this little guy uh, tempted after the gap down to break the 200 on two separate occasions and it's kind of stair-stepping its way down since it's failed. So uh, seeing this weak chart set up, knowing how top heavy we are in the overall market, the S&P is just uh, keeps making new highs and uh, you know, it, it won't go on forever. I expect that there would be a you know, small correction at some point. My idea, and the idea I had in this trade was to uh, have something, have a weak stock with a weak technical setup uh, so that I had a short position in the market when it pulled back. And I thought that this would be uh, able to provide us with that. So what I saw was uh, we entered this trade here at 75, what was my entry, excuse me, 74.30. Um, at about, oops, excuse me, 74.30. Okay, we got in this trade on this day <clears throat> right about, uh, what was that, the 18th, we opened this position at 74.30. It was a half size. I was looking to add, and let me zoom out on this chart and I'll show you what I saw. I see this key support area at $72. Okay, we've hit it, came close once, came closer twice. We definitely hit it a few times, uh, you know, back in October of last year. We hit it again in the December and we're approaching it to the downside once more. So I wanted to take an early starter position so I had a good average and eventually I wanted to uh, double my size on a break of the $72 level because if I zoom out even farther, what you'll see is that there's a lot of room to the downside here. Um, you know, there's gonna be at least uh, three or four points uh, after we break 72 before we hit another bottom. And so, I, like I said, if the market pulled back and I had a good short position on a weak stock, and it's weak because it's trading under its 200 and all the other moving averages, um, I think that this will be one of the ones uh, that dumps uh, when the market does decide to correct or pull in. However, uh, it didn't. So I waited, I got about a point, uh, a little over a point. I sold out half um, and uh, I kept the rest with a stop over 74. I really wanted to see 74 hold. Uh, to the downside and it didn't. So I ended up getting stopped out on the rest for a profit stop when it popped over on Friday. Uh, stopped me out at 74.09. We were trading in the 73s, mid 73s, uh, a couple times uh, in, the, in the previous two days. And unfortunately, there was uh, no, uh, no other sellers. Nobody else was interested in trying to break down that level. And then Friday, we got news that Greece is working on resolution for their economic situation and I was concerned that if the news came out over the weekend uh, I'd be stuck in a short position when the entire market's going to gap up uh, you know on some positive news out of Europe so I didn't want to be exposed uh, in case that happens now I'm still watching this uh, for a break to the downside and I'll look to re-enter it if we end up getting negative news out of Greece or if the market decides that it finally wants to correct we got out of this trade for a $435 winner and that was a two day hold, two or three day hold. So again, it wasn't a big trade. I didn't have an opportunity to go full size. Uh, one of my best trades this week was Celgene. Um, I opened this trade on uh, the 19th and the IBB, which I'll show you in just a second, is the sector ETF uh, for biotechs. And Celgene is one of the highest, uh, or makes up one of the largest components of the IBB. And Celgene is approaching its all-time highs over 125. We haven't been over uh, 125 on Celgene ever. So we're looking for uh, that move in this beautiful chart. Uh, we're looking for that move in, con in connection with the IBB. So 
what I did is uh, once I saw what the uh, IBB was doing, uh, I ended up getting long on this trade. Uh, let's see, back here at, uh, I took some at 118.60 something, 65, 118.68. Uh, on the market open, I took a few hundred shares and uh, I ended up doubling when we got to uh, just about 120. And uh, after that, I had a 119 something average. After that, uh, we ended up popping up, trading just below the highs the all-time highs uh, on Friday, and we closed near the highs. So uh, definitely excited to see what happens when we break this level here. I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to a break and run, and I'll show you the IBB in just a second here. Uh, one of the things I did on this trade, I had uh, I scaled out of it. I took half my profits. I took uh, $700 on just 200 shares off at uh, 123 at the 123 area. And we ended up hitting the 124 uh, was the high there. The high was 124. So we ended up tapping it, but we couldn't get through, which is fine. Um, I uh, I sold. I had I'm holding 200 shares right now, and I'm uh, got another 800 unrealized on it. And I sold two covered calls. Uh, the volatility in the calls were up on the day because uh, the levels we are approaching and the you know the uh, three point move on the day. I sold it near the highs. I got three dollars. For my two contracts, so I put six hundred dollars of premium in the bank. I'm holding two hundred shares, uh, so that lowered my average down to one sixteen, and I'm profitable up over until one twenty eight, where my profits will be capped. So my goal here is sometime next week that we have uh, we see Celgene trading over one twenty five, and I get called away. Uh, that would be ideal. I don't know if Celgene has enough strength, or the sector has enough strength or time to break through this one, uh, the one thirty area, which is not even visible on the chart so I really believe it can get over 125 and if it does hopefully I'll be called away and I'll lock up uh, a little over two thousand twenty five hundred dollars on the trade and uh, be minimal minimal risk now my average is 116 since I sold those calls I applied it to uh, my net cost in the trade so I'm covered down to 116 if it comes against me I'll stop at 120 uh, or so and I'll lock in the four points and uh, I'll cover the calls because they'll be cheaper. We have time decay working in our favor. And uh, you know, if we get a move to the downside, we'll see uh, the premium come out of those calls. Uh, let me pull up the IBB to show you what I'm talking about, what alerted me to this trade. IBB is the uh, NASDAQ sector ETF for biotech. Uh, we had this, dang it. We had this uh, flat top here that was tested a few times, one, two, three four times before finally breaking through. So now the IBB is an all-time high. Biotech has been hot, and Celgene uh, also has been very strong. So I picked the strongest stock with the best chart set up in the sector that was ready to break out, and that's exactly what happened. So it was a good call, and I'm very pleased with the performance of this trade. Like I said, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get called out uh, or close the trade, but either way, it's a winner, and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, we opened some other trades this week uh, on Coach, uh, BRS, YNDX, CVLT, and uh, and that's it. So we opened a few trades. <laughs> we opened quite a few trades this week. We're still holding all of those. Uh, we're in the money or even on them. We've scaled. Uh, we've scaled into some, and we're looking to start scaling out of others. So uh, next week in the trade uh, recap video, hopefully I'll be able to show you uh, what we were able to close out. Uh, from those trades I just mentioned. Uh, if you ever have any questions about my swing trades or my strategy uh, or anything we do at Swing Trade Warrior, don't hesitate to email me. It's in my description. Uh, it's also jeff at swingtradewarrior.com. Thank you for listening to this video and happy trading.